The central object of our spiritual preparation for Easter is actually two truths that we hold in tension. The substitutionary death of our Lord on Calvary, making peace with God and giving us the promise of new life that echoes throughout the empty tomb as we happily announce to the world, He is risen. In Luke chapter 22, the Bible recounts the Last Supper from the doctor's perspective. After sharing the bread and wine with his disciples, Luke records more than the singing of a hymn before the action moves to the Mount of Olives. Sensing once more that his followers had failed to fully appreciate what was about to happen, Jesus explains what his impending death will mean. In verse 37, he quotes Isaiah to say that he will be numbered with the transgressors. God incarnate in Jesus Christ will be seen by the Father in the same light as you and I, as rebels, as enemies who need to make peace with the King. Of course, it is the Lord himself who is the peacemaker, who through his righteousness makes us whole and grants us the gift of peace. Passage that Jesus recalls for us is from Isaiah chapter 53, a center of our reflection for our spiritual preparation. Many of us will have memorized several verses from this passage, mainly those that describe the sacrifice of the servant. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. We rightly see the crucifixion in these verses, the sacrifice of our Savior that grants whosoever shall believe the righteousness that brings peace. The peace that we enjoy comes at an almost unbelievable price. The perfect, unblemished Son of God must be seen by His Father in a different light, as one of the transgressors, as one of us. When the Savior of the world takes all of the sin of the world upon his scarred and bleeding shoulders. His father also turns his face away, however briefly. Perfect communion torn apart by sin. The light of the world is laid in the dark of the tomb. We're given time to consider our part in the burial in the silence of Saturday. We long for the release of Easter morning to recognize that the tomb was not the end of the story, that Jesus was not held captive to death, but instead rises to new life. And he extends his wounded hands to us and offers us the same, to rise from the darkness and know new life, know a new life of peace. That's one of the great promises of Easter that we can consider as our soul is strengthened. I think Paul says it wonderfully at the end of his letter to the Philippian church. Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Friends, we benefit from wrestling with our understanding of the meaning of peace to see how the violence of the cross brings that peace. 
We do well to spend time considering that peace, the cost of that peace, and the effect of that peace on our lives. That peace protects and insulates our hearts, our souls, and that frees us to be satisfied, to be content in every situation. The peace that comes to rest in our hearts is the peace that assures us that we have all that we need for life. We have everything we need for life in full. And seeing that and knowing that serves to increase our sense of peace and we rejoice. We see the cross drawing nearer today, death in its shadow. But peace that comes with the morning follows close after. Are you living in that peace, embodying it for those in your circle of acquaintances, your friends, your family? Are we savoring that peace, finding satisfaction in that peace? I invite you to join me in prayer for our souls, but also for our calling. Pray that the Spirit would show us what peace can mean for us, for our neighbors, for our loved ones, for the world. Pray that our peace would be seen, that our peace would be felt, and that our peace could be shared. Bless you, my friends. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. <laughs>